There have been a lot of updates and changes to artificial intelligence lately. One area that I'm interested in is virtual agents, or programs or bots that run and help do things. Now, I find these interesting because they can help deflect tickets. Many times when someone comes to a help center or needs help, there is an answer out there, or there's an action that needs to be taken, but that person can't find that information, so they have to ask a human for help. Virtual agents help solve that by guiding people to the information they need to prevent the need for a ticket. So here, we're going to jump into the virtual agent found in Jira Service Management. We'll be going into Jira Cloud Premium, and I'll show you how to set up the agent and some quick little things I've learned about it to make it more useful. So let's jump into Jira and see what it looks like. Here I am in a Jira Service Management project called JQuil JSM. To find my virtual agent, I'm going to go down to Project Settings, and then I'm going to scroll down and look for Channels and Self-Service and Virtual Service Agent. You'll need to be a project admin, and again, in Jira Cloud Premium or higher to have this. Now, virtual service agents need to be set up. We can turn them on and to some extent tie them into something like Confluence, and I'll talk about that in a moment. But the first thing we want to do are set up intents. Intents are just something we want the bot to handle for us. So in this example, I have two intents. I have define jQuil. This might be a common question. People don't know what it is. And I have password reset. So if I open up password reset, we're going to see a couple of things. Every intent will have a flow or what happens after the bot determines this is what someone is talking about. So here at the top, I can see when the bot matches the intent, the first thing it will do is offer a choice. And here it's going to ask the person, have you read the help desk article about resets? And I have two choices, yes and no. I can go back to my flow and I can see if they choose yes. Then the bot will ask them what team they're on and then it will escalate this. It will create an issue for a human to look at because the bot can't solve it. However, if that person hasn't read the article, it's going to give them a message to remind them to go read it. And I can see here it links directly to it. And then it's going to resolve or close out this request. This is an example of the virtual agent directing someone to information they might not be able to find on their own. And this represents a ticket that never had to be created. Alternatively, if that person did read it and it was confusing or they've run into some error, the bot can collect additional information and then pass that off to a human speeding up triage and helping this customer get help faster. In addition to flows, every intent will need training. And these are phrases that the bot or agent will use to figure out, are you talking about this particular thing? So in this example, I've told it if reset shows up or password reset help or new password or password reset, that is this intent and not another one. I can add more of these with this button here. And as the bot is used, it will start to learn and get better feedback just from natural use on what this intent is. So I don't have to include every possible way of phrasing, I need a new password. The bot will start to pick it up. That said, I have to start with at least three training phrases so the bot has something to start with. And intents also have settings. These are things mostly for the admin. The description helps admins figure out what is this particular intent. The display name could be displayed if there are multiple things that are similar and the bot doesn't know which one. So someone can click on a button that says password reset assistance. And last, if it's unsure, it's going to ask, are you looking for password reset assistance? And then if someone clicks yes, they'll know that whatever they typed in ties into this intent. Again, it's learning as it goes. So that is a basic intent. Now, the bot has some other features I'm going to point out before we dig into building our own intent. One is the standard flow. These are all flows that are just generic and built in. Things like greeting the customer. Now, here, I can't change much about this flow, but what I can do is change the message that the customer gets. Maybe I want to change the emojis or add a link to something. Regardless, when the bot is triggered, this is what will show up. If I go to settings, all I'll get is more information about this standard flow. So again, not much I can do to change these. There's also a standard flow for escalating. What message shows up when it has to be escalated? One for after we've resolved the request. So if the bot is successful and gets to its resolve state in the intent, 
it's going to ask for a CSAT rating. And again, here I can change the verbiage. And I can also change verbiage on other follow-up. So if it doesn't hear back for an hour, it might just let the person know, hey, I'm still here. The match intent standard flow is interesting because you'll notice it has confidence levels. It's saying if the bot is fairly confident that it's found the right intent, it's going to go down this particular path. And again, it's doing this based on its training phrases and other things. But it's asking the customer, did I get it right? I'm very confident. And if they click yes, they go to the intent flow that we've set up. And if they say no, it's going to ask for additional information, asking the person to rephrase the request to try and understand what's happening. Now, the other confidence levels, medium and low, have a similar path. So medium's going to ask, hey, are there other things you might be talking about? And then someone can click on it. Again, reinforcing the training model. But there I can also just go straight to raise a ticket if the agent is very far off and doesn't know what's going on. And if the bot is not confident, if maybe a few words or phrases match, it's going to provide this message. Again, basically asking the person to rephrase and then try to match again. So the match intent standard flow is really to help the bot grow and learn as it goes. And last, there's an auto close standard flow. I like this because it means if the person hasn't communicated with the bot in five minutes, the bot's going to ask, hey, do you still need help? And they can either pick up the conversation or they can resolve their issue. Now, the other menu I want to dig into is settings. And this is where we provide some high-level information about what the bot should do or how it should work. For example, what request type will it enter tickets in? I can only pick one per project, so I tend to make this pretty broad. But also, do I want to include Atlassian answers? Now, if the bot can't match an intent that I've provided, I can click this toggle and it will then dig through Confluence to try to figure out what is this person talking about. I like to turn this on because it makes the bot a little bit broader. I was going to say smarter, but it gives it more information to try and help someone out. The next important thing in here are my channels. By default, it's going to connect to the portal. And I'll walk through a live demo of this in a moment. But I also have options to tie it into Slack or Microsoft Teams or email. This allows the bot to talk to people in other channels, not just through the portal and is a great way to help close the distance between someone needing help and getting the help they need. So now that we understand a bit about the bots, let's see what they look like. I'm going to open up my portal, and we're going to chat with one of these bots. Because I've turned on the bot, I can see this button to chat with a virtual agent. I'll click on it, and I'll be pulled into what looks like a chat message with this particular bot. So I might ask it a question. Right away, I see this default flow of the welcome message, followed by a confirmation, are you looking for password reset assistance? Now, if I say no, the bot's going to ask for more information, and it's going to update its model so it's more accurate next time. But it's correct, so I'll click yes. Now the bot is going to go down the flow that I provided by asking, have I read the article about resets? Which I could click to open, or I could indicate yes, I have, or no, I haven't. If I say no, the bot will continue to follow the flow and do what I've asked. And because it reached the end of its flow, it's going to ask me, how was my experience? I'll say it was good. And there we go. Now, I'm going to start a new conversation, and we'll take the other path, the yes, just so we can see the bot in a little bit more action. This time I'll use a different message, password help, to see if the bot can figure out what I need. And I can see it's still asking, is this about a password reset? And it is. And in this case, I have read the article. It gave it to me before. And following the flow, it needs to know what team I'm on. I'm on the Tiger team. And I can see the bot has now made a ticket for me. If I open this ticket, what I'm going to see is the entire thread that I had with the bot that I can use. Now, if I click on this ticket as an agent, I'll see the same information. I'll see that this cre was created and that Atlassian Assistant has been pulling in information. So right away, my agents have more information about what happened. They can clearly see what this person spoke about, and they can get more context and detail. Even better, information that is prompted in the flow is pulled onto the ticket. 
So it helps speed up ticket entry and making sure folks have what they need. Now, if I go back into my virtual agent, we'll see that the intents now have some information. My password reset has been used twice and it was matched 100% of the time. So every time the bot thought it was a password reset, it was. Half the time it could resolve it and it has a CSAT. These metrics are important because they tell me is the bot set up properly? Does it have the right intents and flows and other information? I can also go to conversations and see what specific conversations have happened. And even better, I can see information like when it was, what the first message was, does it matched, which intent was used and what happened. I have date ranges and this is important again because I can get a good idea on how well is the bot working. So those are virtual agents in Jira service management. I really like this feature. It helps deflect a lot of those low level tickets and make sure that folks are guided towards knowledge that they maybe didn't know existed. Having statistics and numbers around how it's operating is also very helpful for someone managing it because you can go in and tweak it and adjust it to make sure it's actually meeting your needs. So if you're using Jira cloud premium or higher, I highly recommend go take a look at these. Try and identify some Jira service projects that have a lot of low level tickets or some narrow use cases and test them out. This is a great way to build buy-in and also to save your team a little bit of hassle. So those are Jira virtual service agents. Drop information in the comments if you've got questions, if you've used them, if you're frustrated by them or anything else. I really appreciate you taking time to learn with me. Please like and subscribe, it helps me out. And I really hope to see you here again soon.